It's very hard to see a distant planet directly, but if you see the light from its star dim a little, it suggests a planet could be passing in front of it, an event called a transit. But this transit technique doesn't work as well for small planets as big ones. An Earth-sized planet blocks a hundred times less light from its star than a Jupiter-sized planet. So, although hundreds of gas giants have been found this way, smaller worlds have proved more elusive. Until, that is, one astronomer had the idea of looking in a different place. Small red dwarf stars. And that changed everything. Red dwarfs are many times smaller than stars like our sun. So Earth-sized planets will cause a bigger dip in their light. In theory, allowing astronomers to spot small rocky worlds like our own. So if you're looking for a true Earth-like planet, it's actually easier around smaller stars. This simple but revolutionary approach meant planet hunters didn't need a giant telescope to search for Earth-sized alien worlds. And just 500 miles south of the very large telescope, sits a pioneering device that's over 10 times smaller, the brainchild of Belgian planet hunter Michael Gillon. My goal was to detect new planets with a special focus on small planets that would be potentially habitable, so that could harbor liquid water on the surface, possibly, maybe life, who knows. To search for these new worlds, Michael began stalking out red dwarf stars in 2011, using his small telescope, which he named TRAPPIST. Well, TRAPPIST is an acronym, which means transiting planets, so transiting exoplanets, and planetesimars, which is a funny name for comets and asteroid, small telescope. So it's a far-fetched acronym, but mostly it's a reference to uh, the Belgian origin of the project and one of our finest products in Belgium, which is, of course, the Trappist beers. But unlike Trappist beer, which is famously brewed by hand in Belgian monasteries, this robotic telescope can be operated from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. The telescope itself is a remote control device, so we just press a button and launch a telescope and it, it starts observing. And during the whole night, it will observe without any uh, human intervention. For four years, the TRAPPIST telescope steadily recorded the brightness of individual stars, one by one, waiting for the characteristic dip that reveals a planet. And it was remarkably successful. So in 2015, we had around 100 giant exoplanets that we contributed to the discovery. And so it was very encouraging, uh, but of course, uh, the dream was still Earth-sized planets. The TRAPPIST telescope was working perfectly, but 7,000 miles away, Mikel was still hoping for an historic breakthrough. Then, on September the 16th, 2015, a dramatic sequence of events ended in a huge discovery. TRAPPIST was scheduled to watch a very faint red dwarf star just 40 light years away. But that night, a powerful earthquake struck northern Chile. Mikel was in Belgium, but astronomer Dr. Pascal Hippon was near the epicenter. Oh, it was uh, surprisingly strong when you hear everything cracking and everything shaking, that's really weird. It's a very unique sensation, especially at that level of the magnitudes of this earthquake. The violent quake and the tsunami that followed caused widespread damage and disruption. The TRAPPIST telescope was in one of the worst affected areas, but it was built to withstand seismic events. When there is a certain level of earthquake, the first thing that happens is that the telescope is going to stop functioning. The observation uh, stopped and uh, the dome was closed in safe mode. 
And then the, the morning, my student noticed the situation and she relaunched the observation of the star. The telescope wasn't damaged, but by the time it was working again, the night was nearly over and there were only three hours left to observe the target star before dawn. Back in Europe, Mikhail was analyzing the data when something caught his eye. I was at home in my sofa with my laptop and I saw a very clear transit-like signal. And so I was super, super excited. And furthermore, I, know, I knew that the star was small, so the planet should have been more or less the size of the Earth. I showed the, the, the plot, the laptop screen, to my daughter, and she didn't care at all. She just went to bed because for her it was just nothing. But uh, for me, I was sure it was something big. 40 light years away, an Earth-sized planet had passed in front of its dwarf star, and the earthquake almost caused Mikel and his team to miss it. 